different different like every week man i've been doing lives in our facebook group of zoom for six months or more and yeah. <laughs> some weeks it works some weeks it doesn't work Got Sounds it. like it's working because I hear the feedback uh, in the background. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's something I need to mute in order to make that correct. Let me see here. Okay, boom. Yeah. I'm just going to share it into the group and then I'm just going to turn Facebook off, I think. Awesome. Uh, what I have done in the past is have Facebook up and then turn the volume. Oh, actually, I've just pulled it up on my phone. That's what I do. I pulled it up on my phone to double check. Okay. Well, let's just do this. Okay. Yeah, I think we're good, brother. Uh, I'm just going to awesome. go ahead and turn Facebook off, I think. Sure. And since we're up, up and running. Okay. Cool. You can hear me all right? Yes, sir. Okay, excellent, brother. Welcome. Uh, wonderful to have you here, brother. Um, and I just wanted—I just wanted to clarify—is it, uh, the pronunciation of your last name? Is it Amix? Uh, yeah, it's actually A Mix. Think of like A and then M I X. Amix. Amix. Okay, wonderful, yeah. brother. Well, welcome to the conversation today, brother. Welcome to the Porn to Podcast, um, Porn to Purpose Podcast, which is a, a newer endeavor we've been kind of working on over the past uh, couple months here. And I'd love to just make a, a, an introduction uh, to you here, quick, AJ, for our for our audience and, and, and viewers, anyone that's able to to join with us live here today. Um, so, if, if if I may, I'll go ahead and, and begin just by uh, saying that Anthony John. Amix is a best-selling author and life and business coach for online entrepreneurs. HubSpot has named him one of the top 10 coaches in the world. He's been featured on places like Business Insider, CNN, and Creative Live. And he lives outside of Dallas, Texas with his wife and daughter. Welcome, Anthony. Thanks, man. That was a pretty good positioning statement. I must say that sounded really good. <laughs> that did sound good. That did sound good, brother. And, uh, you know, I, we were talking uh, a month or so back, or maybe it was more whenever you had me uh, so graciously for your podcast. Yep. And uh, I asked, I asked you, you know, is it, is it Anthony or AJ? And I said, what does your mom call you? And you said, my mom calls me AJ. So I'm going to call you AJ if that's okay. Perfect. Love it. <laughs> cool brother so so great to have you here man i was also thinking before our conversation today when did we first make contact and uh i was reflecting upon that and, and i think it was it was more than five years ago now maybe as many as seven years ago now i know i was selling wow. real estate we were part of another men's community together and mm. i think at that time if my memory serves me correctly you were doing some work with entrepreneurs and instagram maybe is that is that correct yeah, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. Twitter. Okay, okay, Twitter, man. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. So I'd love to just, I'd love to just say hello, and uh, we've we've kind of given you the introduction. I would love to just give you the opportunity to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit, maybe about who you are and and what you're up to in the world. Yeah. So, man, one of my biggest purposes in the world right now is helping. Is and I really think it's probably till I die, whatever that mm. will be. Mm. is like helping as many people as humanly possible remember who they are mm. like remember who they truly are and then from that place going out and creating life on their terms and it's different things for different people like i i had one of my business partners in a different business flew in uh just this week and we're working on building like one of the premier business resources for online entrepreneurs uh, who are advancing the world forward and, and we had some really great conversations kind of during that that mastermind and one of those things we're trying to like find like what's the identity uh that people really want to land on like what's the journey that we're taking on and we kind of distilled it down into business owner well another person in the business another business partner was like well entrepreneur means a lot more to me than a business owner because the entrepreneur is like creating these big things like an elon musk and he's managing different projects and you know really contributing to the world and i said yeah i hear you However, I don't believe every single human being is, is called to that. Some are, and that's brilliant, and you should do that if that's what you're called to. But some are. Some are like living on purpose, 
uh, where they're just like, man, I, I'm running a, a roofing company. I make $5 million a year and I get to hunt and I get to fish and I feel alive and on purpose and I'm contributing at my church or whatever their religious philosophy is and giving back. Like, that's perfect. So who am I to be like, no, you got to play this impossible game. Right. And I'm about all dreaming bigger, but it really is like, hey, let's get clear on what is it that you're called to? Not from like an egoic, creating a false sense of significance in the world, but like, like, let's come home to who we truly are, which I believe is a soul in control and tap into the void, which is one thing I really resonate with you, like tap into the void and see what drops in. Like what's that inspired vision? And then whatever that is, let's go create that, right? Yeah, I, right. That's kind of what, that's what I feel like I'm here on earth to do and help people. Uh, I love it, man. So I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you say, you know, helping people tap into their, into their purpose and into their calling in this life is one thing, but also, and, and, and I think the real sweet spot, at least for me that I've identified in my life is now, how do we do that now? And how do we really contribute doing that yeah. and make an impact and also live prosperously through that? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think uh, there's like two there's two paths I think a lot of people see in the marketplace when it comes to potential and purpose. In fact, I was just talking about this yesterday at a deep level. One path is like follow your bliss and trust that God or the universe or source, whatever people call it, has your back. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like go with the flow. Another path is like, well, be a professional and just do the work. Like, you know, screw your excuses, like just do the work, show up, be a professional. And I found there's wisdom in both of those paths, but I'm really like trying to do my best in my own personal life and the lives of my clients, that finding that centered approach to those two things. Uh, for me, like having a wife and a daughter, if I'm just like, oh, follow my bliss, da, 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 like there's a little, there's not enough structure <laughs> yeah. and it, it creates a little too much chaos. And then on the other side, if I'm just like for my own, my own self, my own, just like self-love, be a professional, do the work, doesn't matter. And then I, I, it triggers a lot of my just like not, not being nurtured. And so for me, it's really finding the balance. Mm -hmm. It's almost like two, those, both of those paths are kind of like two pedals on a bicycle. Mm -hmm. uh, and you could use just one path or the other to get to where you want to go. But I feel like there's a more of, it's not like balance. I just feel like there's more power and purpose generated in, in operating in the and also of the approach rather than the either or. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hearing you speak to you know, like, like almost like the yin and yang of life. Yeah. You know? Is. Yeah. The masculine and the feminine, maybe a bit. And, yeah. that, and that harmonious blend that is, you know, so potent and powerful. The chaos and the order. <laughs> yes, brother. Yes. Yes. And, and, and um, when, when you say you speak, you, you work, um, I was, I was taking a look at your website and kind of some specifics about the work that you're doing. You work with creative entrepreneurs. What might a, what might a typical client look like to you or a favorite client look like for you? Yeah. So like somebody who's running like a plumbing company or an insurance company, usually not. Could I help them? Absolutely. Uh, I usually work with like the crazies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I like calling them salmon. Like they're just, they're strange humans, man. Like they're, they're doing weird things. Like some of them are creating some of the biggest companies and teaching people Instagram marketing. Some of them are creating online businesses uh, and they're traveling around the world. Like Ben Slater, he from Australia, but he just spent eight months in Mexico. He's going to New York city and then he's going to Greece. Like it just, People who are just living weird, non-traditional lifestyles are usually very creative. They're usually plugged into the arts at some level or another, but they've channeled that into the game of entrepreneurship and business, but they're just really creative, really, um, like they have a lot of feminine energy. They have a lot, yeah, they have a lot of the yin, a lot of the, the mm -hmm. chaos. Um, doesn't mean that they don't have order too, but they're just usually kind of quirky, expressive individuals. Yeah. Love it, brother. And, and, and you, uh, you run a podcast as well, which you had me as a, as a yeah. guest on. What's the focus of that? And, and what are you enjoying about that work? And the whole focus on that one, it comes back to like my life mission right now. My purpose is helping people remember who they are so they can then f maintain their center in the chaos, embody their potential and unlock freedom in their life and business and really, you know, helping them be on that path to being unstoppable and both unstoppable in both of the games, the life and the business. Yeah. The thing that's really fun uh, for me, I do a Sunday sermon every single week. I drop on Sundays 
And so it's kind of fun to put my preacher hat on and just teach things I've experienced, lessons. It's kind of like personal development meets scripture. Sometimes it's Christian, Christian scripture. Sometimes it's a Taoist scripture. It's, sometimes it's just a life experience. It's fun. And then just the people I get to meet. I get to pe meet people like you. I've met people who have had traumatic brain injuries and they've put their life back together through ayahuasca ceremony. Um, just, man, just amazing human beings that are willing to like show up and share their heart and, and their wisdom, uh, not from a place of posturing and yeah, just a place of just giving their heart um, and sharing some wisdom. And that, yeah, it's just really awesome to connect with those people and be able to share those stories. Love it, brother. Love it. Yeah. Um, if it's all right, brother, I'd love to just I'd love to just maybe dig in a, a little bit more on some of the work that you're doing. I find it really, sure. uh, really fascinating. And I, I just love to also tap in and, and connect with your genius and what you're doing in the world. And um, I, I was taking a look at your website and, uh, you know, so, some of the some of the copy there, uh, the underground method. Married yeah. marketers, coaches, and consultants are using to generate more revenue by working less. So can you tell us a little bit about this, this maybe underground method? What is this approach that you're using with your clients? Man, I found there's a lot of ancient wisdom that it seems like we've, we're just out of touch with. Uh, and so a lot of it is grounded in, in who we're being. Mm. So I think a lot of us have been conditioned to believe if we go out and we do the thing, then we can have the thing and then we can be the thing. And oftentimes, at least here in Western world society, and man, even everybody, I've, every single person I've coached, maybe it's part of the beingness of being human. They're running a success equation, which is like, I'll be worthy of fill in the blank. I'll be a good husband or I'll be good enough. I'll be a good enough brother. Uh, I'll be worthy of love or secure, whatever. Like it's, it's very fractal, but it's, I'll be worthy of blank when I have a, B, C, or when I become X, Y, or Z. And the thing is, is people run this and they may run this equation for five years or 10 years or 30 years. They then have the A, B, or C, or they become the X, Y, or Z, and they still do not feel the, the, the void of worthiness or enoughness or happiness or freedom or whatever it is that they're after. And so what happens for most people is they then kick the can down the road like, oh, well, it's a new X, Y, or Z, a new A, B, or C. And they just play this game until they're 80 or 90 and they look back on their life and are like, whoa, <laughs> I missed the point. So a lot of the work I do is returning people back to who they are, realizing like, yo, you're, you're worthy because you exist. Like you could have been a rock, bro. Mm -hmm. Like you have nothing to prove or defend to your wife, your daughter, your mother, your father, society, humanity, or even yourself. Like let's return to that. Not just from a concept because it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to know it. Uh -huh. And oftentimes lots of people are reading books or working with coaches or listening to podcasts like this or joining Facebook groups and they know it. But they don't know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in Christian scripture, like Paul talked about this in the book of Acts, he says, yo, why is it that I'm doing the things I don't want to do? And why am I not doing the things that I want to be doing? <laughs> Modern day quandary right there. Modern day quandary that humans have been experiencing forever. And so Carl Jung said it, I think one of the best ways, the answer to Paul's dilemma Carl Jung said, well, until we can make the unconscious conscious, uh -huh. it will direct your life and you'll call it fate. Uh -huh. And so I found like, man, there's a lot of truth to that. There's a lot of unconsciousness of me on a being level, on a doing level that's dictating the results that I'm experiencing. And I'm looking out there for all of the answers. And there's some wisdom to that. But what we've forgotten is it's in here. It's in uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. And when we're willing to dive into that unknown, like the parts of us that we don't even know exist, when we're willing to dive into the uncertainty, like I just pulled a trigger today of hiring a new coach for $10,000. And it's like, well, what's the plan? I don't know. Let's have a first co coaching conversation. We'll figure it out. Yeah. And there's a part of me that's like, well, Shouldn't I have a roadmap? But there's another part of me that like I can 
I'm a sacral being, not everybody's designed that way, but I am. And so I'm like, there's a part of me that just knows, not knows, but knows. So make the $10,000 investment. It'll pay hundreds of thousands of dollars on the other side of that. And I think that's what people are missing a lot. That's what people are missing when it comes to creating success, when it comes to maybe finding intimacy with themselves, intimacy with their partner. Maybe it's why they're struggling with pornography. Maybe it's why they're not finding their purpose is we've forgotten about the game of like, we're a human being. Mm. And if we let the pendulum swing all the way just into being this, like I know you've dove like deep into that game. If we just take that only in and of itself, then we'll like be, but then it's like, well, where's my external fruit? Right. And then we're like, well, what's the point of this? And then we're like, oh, and most humans just swing the pendulum back and forth from one extreme to the other. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. How can we maintain this centered approach from like be a little bit objective to start finding like your path? Mm -hmm. And there's lot, there's there's lots of there's lots of ways we could talk about this. Like, I feel like probably the easiest way I can depict this when it comes to purpose and genuine human expression is like, we're, we're all like emotion wants to flow through us. The totality of anger, the totality of sadness, the totality of fear, the totality of joy, the totality of sexuality, the five core human emotions. There's a whole bunch more, but we'll just kind of distill them into those five core. Mm -hmm. The moment that we're like, yeah, sexuality can't come through this because of the stories and meanings that we've created based upon our human experience up to this point. It's kind of like saying, hey, God, fuck you. You can't come. Your sexuality can't come through this vessel. Right. Your anger. I've experienced some anger and it's hurt people. So your anger, yeah, can't come through this vessel. And so what happens is we then constrict the flow of God or life force or source or energy or universe, whatever word we want to use it. We're constricting the flow to come through us. So then the argument is like, well, if I open up to the possibility of the yin, of the chaos, and let it come through me, how do I make sure I have a little bit of yang, a little bit of order to like direct it, to direct the flow? And this is where it's almost like a river. If the energy, the, the emotion, the energy in motion is the river coming through us for expression, if one river bank is like, let's say, unconditional love and integrity, and another river bank is our values, different things for different people, different things for different cultures, no right, no wrong, but it's, it just is what it is. And it's going to change as we evolve and change. When we are walking with an integrity and unconditional love with our values this is what sets the container to allow the life force the chaos to flow through us to have expression and just like a river it ebbs and flows and it takes shape over over time ultimately carving out our unique purpose our potential and life allowing god to have a unique experience as me as anthony john amix as you as every other single human being listen to this podcast right now but when we're open to allowing ourselves to be the vessel for the totality of the life force to flow through us while taking responsibility to walk with an integrity and unconditional love with their values that's when we actually can create this beautiful expression known as our lives does yeah, that make any brother. sense? Oh yeah, brother, it's beautiful, man. Beautiful. Um, so all this, you know, I, I, I've learned and I'm learning, you know, that entrepreneurship is is quite the spiritual journey. In fact, <laughs> you know, yes, it is. It, it, it really is. It's it's quite quite beautiful. Um, yeah, vessel for that. And, and so I'd love. Can you maybe speak just a little bit more to all this this deep, beautiful, um, you know, uh, soul frequency work that you're doing and speaking to? What is the implication of that of, of that in 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 business? when the rubber meets the road, Anthony? So I have seen it. A lot of people stall out when they're scaling a business, when they're leading their team because they're in drama. And it's usually because they don't have the capacity to vulnerably be with someone. And so they project their own insecurities, their own inadequacies, their unconscious blocks onto everybody that's on their team. And they churn and burn team members. 
So part of like the game is like, well, when we can, when we can own the darkness in us, when we can heal it within us, we hold the space for others to heal it within them. We hold the space to just be in someone else's darkness and remind them that, hey, you're the light. And so tact, like tactically, the way this plays out is there's more synergy in teams. There's more energy spent in creation rather than like putting out fires. Yeah. And that then translates into more production, which creates more money. That's one way. Another way is just like, we're spent a lot of times entrepreneurs are like usually creating something into response to something. For instance, personally, for a lot of my life, I didn't feel enough. And even deeper than that, I didn't feel like I mattered. And so in response to that, I'm like, I will matter. I will carve out my path. And I did, but there was like, a lack of internal freedom in it where it's just like the creation was heavy and it's just like a burnt out so when i'm willing to do the deep internal work of like okay the paradox is real on one hand of the equation nothing i do matters three generations from now my life will be meaningless there's some truth to that yeah. and on the other hand of the spectrum of course the very words I'm speaking right now have influence on my own life and the lives of those who listen. So of course it matters, yeah. which is true. When we're willing to admit the paradox and connect to the truth of the paradox, we're like it's all true. What is it I choose? Now I can be at cause to go create. And in that there's more, there's more internal freedom in the creation uh, and I'm able to create the fruit, the results, the money faster uh -huh. with less friction. So with more ease, so I'm going to experience more joy. And so a lot of like this, what I, you know, you asked me like, what is the results? It's like creating more money it's while experiencing more ease, while experiencing more joy. That doesn't mean everything's joyous, <laughs> but it's just like, there's this, there is a lightness to the game uh than it used to be so like gritty and tenaciousness yeah love it brother love it what do you say to the person who's who's showing up doing the deep soul work doing their best to do their 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 perp their their, their souls calling and, and give their gifts and talents to the world and they're also doing the business hustle they're, they're they're putting the work in on that side but they're not yet seeing the results what are some common things that you see showing up there and and what are some some course corrections that you might offer for something like that that's a great question. That's a great question. And I don't know if I fully have the answer to that question. Yeah. Where I land right now is part of that. I think it, cause I I'm experiencing some of this and I think all humans at one level or another experience some version of this because typically we're on a journey as an entrepreneur up some mountain. And typically we're looking at the top of the mountain and we are then seeing the gap from where we are to where we want to go and oftentimes we then make a story and meaning about what that means about us and how we should be further when when if we surrender to knowing like it's done at some point in time and have enough conscious awareness to realize like hey look look at this part of me who's finding the inadequacies. Thank you for that gift because that is propelling me up the mountain. And let me take a moment to look back at the parking lot from where, from where I've came. Yeah. Let me give myself some credit. I think that's, that's probably where we find power to, to start producing more fruit. Because if we're constantly in like, well, it should be this, it should be that. And we're coming, it's a bit from like, scarcity and like why isn't it going faster right. Am I, is there something wrong with me do i need yeah. more skill sets well then life's just going to give us more opportunities to express that way of being mm -hmm. and there's some gifts in that so when we can also look back and appreciate what we appreciate appreciates and so i feel like it's a bit of the dance between the two and when we're willing to have a habitual like have a habit where every morning 
we have we cr we create gratitude and appreciation from where we've been to then source like yeah let's go get this i'm enough let's go let's go serve and then we're going back up the mountain i feel like that's probably probably where it where it's going to come down to so part of that is connecting to the truth and then surrendering to experience and creating outcomes does that help oh yeah for sure brother for sure for sure speaking to that point a little bit uh anthony what are you how do you address maybe in your clients or even in your own journey um or, or just fellow associates the, these uh very real experiences of lack limitation scarcity uh especially within entrepreneurship how do I address it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, what are some, yeah, yeah, what do you, yeah, how do you, what are some ideas around that that you might share? Like, like how do we shift out of it or how? Do yeah, we shifting out of it like specifically, to, I think would be awesome. Yeah. This is going to sound crazy a bit. So uh, my partner and I, we've created an experience that we call fire breathing and it's, it's like a guided meditation track and then it goes into like some breath work. I have found if we own that shadow, if we own the unconscious, if we connect to it and we surrender to the experience of it, 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 it opens up the void for it to not own us. So for instance, I found myself judging uh, a woman in my life once for being weak. And I, I've, I've learned from Christopher John Stubbs. He's a mutual friend of ours. If I'm, if I pointing at it, I spot it, I got it. If I point at you and judge you, three fingers pointing right back at me. Yeah, brother. So I'm like, wow, look, I'm judging this person as weak. Do I fully accept that I'm weak? And when I checked in on that, it was like, oh, no, no way. I'm not weak. I'm not a victim. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, interesting. I guess I haven't fully been with that part of me. Hmm. All right. I'm going to go be with that part of me. And so that process of fire breathing, I wrote down on a piece of paper. I, I am weak. I am a victim. Put it on my chest, laid down and let the track guide me into the experience of being weak and being a victim. And in that experience, because we're like, hey, we're, we're trying that on and in the guided meditations, like if you could, if it could be a sound, what would the sound be? How could you be at 10% more? Uh, if it was a posture, what would that posture, that body movement be? And in the experience, I was, I was outside in my backyard, had my, my earphones on. I was in a fetal position, whimpering, like. Uh, mm. So for me at a subconscious level, it like took me back to being, and I could, I, the experience that I even saw is I was in a crib, just whining, watching my mother walk by, which then got me to a deeper awareness of like, oh, there's a part of me that feels like nothing I do matters. I'm wanting some nurturing. I'm asking for some nurturing and here's people walking by the crib. Mm. So what happened for me is when I could experience being weak, I could have like fully on experience it. I could, it created more compassion because I had, I had fully accepted it in myself. So now I could accept it in another person. And so what happens when we experience it on the other side of that in my bones, source was like, it's not even possible for you to be weak. It's, it's not humanly possible. So then all of the stories and meanings that are created just went. And so that would be my answer. It's like, if we can identify the thing that I, I tell this to my clients all the time, our students in Project Shift and the people that I coach, when they're stuck, and I'm like, what is it you're afraid to be? They're like, well, you know, and they justify and they defend. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck about your story. Answer the question. What is it you're afraid to be? Let's just align with that. Yeah, I'd be afraid to be a loser. Have you ever Then How about you stop pretending that you're not a loser? <laughs> and let's align with the truth that you're a loser. Well, I'm not. I, I make, you know, I was like, I know. I know you have lots of external results to prove you're not. And you've created those because you're afraid that you are. 
So let's own the fact that you are a loser. I don't see you that way, but you see yourself that way. Let's align with that truth and experience it. And every single time when they experience the very thing they're afraid to be, it opens up a whole new potentiality to be cause. And the stories and meanings have no hold because they've experienced it. Uh, Most people will not experience what they're afraid to be because of the stories and meanings that they've created. If they'll transcend the stories and meanings and connect to the truth of like, man, yeah, you're right. Huh. I'm afraid to be a loser. All right, surrender. Whoop. Go to the very bottom of that. What happens is they're resurrected and life is found that no one can take away from them. Yeah. That's what I would tell somebody, man. Yeah, brother. Beautiful. Profound. Thank you. You're welcome. I'd love to maybe shift a little bit uh, into the conversation, maybe a little bit uh, around pornography, sexuality, sure. Uh, sure. since since we are we are here and in, in, in front of the the make a peace with porn community and such an important. Um, relevant conversation for so many men. Um, something I found in, in, in my journey was really hindering. And I was looking mm. at some terminology around this hindering, derailing, maybe hijacking me and, and moving more into my purpose, affecting my sense of leadership, my sense of worthiness. You know what I mean? And um, I think my general, my general evolution, maybe on a, a, a on level of consciousness or, or soul evolution, you know, mm, and yeah. Um, yeah, creating a lot of blocks for me. And um, I, I think it's, it's something that maybe, maybe some are aware of, but maybe not. And, and I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, maybe sharing from your own journey or other clients that you've worked with, sure. uh, AJ, um, what have you seen as, as the impacts of pornography, maybe on maybe on um, conscious or impact-driven entrepreneurs. I had a conversation with a woman yesterday. She ended up in her divorce because her husband was addicted to porn. Mm. Um, I can speak personally for me, when I had engaged in pornography, there's just a lot of repressed guilt and shame. Yeah. Now I found a lot of liberation. My wife's European, she's Romanian. So their relationship to pornography is vastly different than here in America, it seems like. Where there's just like, there's no guilt and shame. It's just like, yeah, there's pornography. Women look at pornography, men look at pornography. Men and women both like men and women. It means nothing. You enjoy it, you enjoy it. You don't enjoy it, you don't. And uh, she and I having those conversations like burnt through and released a lot of guilt and shame. And it opened up a pathway for me to then consider like, if I'm, if I'm looking at pornography outside of the endorphins of masturbation and the dopamine hits that we're getting from it, which are highly addictive, at a deeper level, what is it that I'm wanting to experience that I'm not creating, that I'm creating with pornography? Yeah. And as I sat with that question, what opened up for me personally was like sensuality. Like I really enjoyed lesbian porn because of the sensuality of it. And so then I was like, huh, well, then how could I start creating more sensual experiences with my wife? And so that for, I know this sounds weird, but it is what it is. It's been my own personal experience. It's almost like for me, because I, I don't I'll go to pornography for, I mean, for the addiction of the dopamine hits it does i mean it's there don't get me wrong for as a stress reliever or whatever but i have other ways that i can release stress like breath work and meditation other things that I, I use but for me it's been a tool to like find what is it i want to experience and how could i have conversations with my wife to create those experiences and it's really become a tool and so with some of my clients who have issues with pornography not addictions just the guilt and shame they carry they, they haven't allowed themselves to like transcend the stories and meanings from their culture to just really ask the deeper question of like, well, what is it that I'm wanting to experience that I'm not experiencing? And then how can I take responsibility to go create that with another person if I want to? Or no, I'm using pornography because I want to experience some sensuality. And 
rather than doing it from a place of guilt and shame, just like own it. No, I want to experience some sensuality and this is what I'm choosing. Mm -hmm. uh, that to me has been my experience with pornography. Uh, and I, I haven't coached a whole lot of people with issues around pornography. Yeah. The only one person that I know right now that has an issue with it, person I'm coaching is, is this guilt and shame due to his Christian upbringing. Yeah. 100%. Uh, another thing, you know, you, you say, what am I actually looking for in this moment? That's a lot of the work that we do around the men is awareness around the needs. And what am I actually after in this moment? Is it just okay. an orgasm? Is it just to see people having sex on a screen? Or am I after something, something deeper here? And sensuality, one. Another one, connection. Huge. Yeah. You know, yep. maybe, maybe with others, maybe with themselves, you know? 100%. 100%. The one client I have right now who yeah, who has addiction issues with alcohol, tobacco, and pornography, the common root is connection, straight yeah. up connection. Because mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. three things for him are his fastest, easiest path to connection. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. At the, toward the beginning of our conversation today, Anthony, you kind of mentioned like five domains, one of which was sexuality. Yep. Right? And, and, what would you say, Anthony, are the implications of, 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 our, of our sexual energy, our, uh, of our creative force uh, properly misdirected or um, uh, properly directed or misdirected or maybe maybe better than properly, but directed in a healthy way or, or misdirected maybe in a not so healthy way? What are the implications of that maybe in life or in business? I mean, one, I would say if we don't find a way to channel that creativity that's in that's in alignment again this comes back to kind of what we talked about like getting clear on what are the top five values for our life and again not your mother's not your father's not society's but taking a moment to like get clear on your your top five values uh dr john d uh, dr john d martini has a values exercise on his website that's free that's actually really darn good once you clear on those then walking with an integrity so then it's just like okay if these are my values how do I walk with integrity and channel this sexuality, this creativity through me mm -hmm. and really, and really get, really get curious about it, you know, because there's so many ways that we could do it, whether it's breath work, whether it's meditation, whether it's art, whether it's music, whether it's writing a book, whether it's creation and business or leading a team or whether it's sex. Um, yeah, I think it's just really getting clear on giving ourselves permission because I don't think a lot of people give themselves permission to connect with their genuine desires. Mm. Like they're like, oh, I have this genuine desire, but I uh, can't do that because of this story and meaning that was embedded upon me. I have a client right now, her assignment, I was like, because she was struggling with owning her desires. I was like, let's get really clear on uh, everything you don't want about your life. Unapologetically. It was actually a really intense conversation. Because for her, because she's a mother, one of her truths was, I don't ever want another son like this. Because her son was special needs. And she felt a lot of guilt and shame to even speak it. Now, I could hold space for her and not make that mean anything about her as a mother or her as a human. It's just, if I put myself in her shoes and if my daughter's special needs, I'm pretty damn sure a part of me would be like, I don't fucking like this. Yeah. And that doesn't mean anything about me or God or any, it's just a truth. There's a part of me that doesn't want this. Mm -hmm. And there's a part of me that does want this. Like it's acknowledging the spectrum. And I feel like a lot of us don't give ourselves permission to acknowledge the spectrum without making it mean anything about ourselves or other people. Mm -hmm. And so I think when we give ourselves permission to acknowledge the spectrum, like the best, the best illustration I can, I can, I can maybe use is like put all of the cards on the table. Like if there's 52 cards in a deck, we just like put them all on the floor and then ask ourselves, okay, there they all are. Everything I don't like and everything I like, there it is. Doesn't mean anything. It's just there. I'm objectively looking at it. I think this is some of the stuff you've learned through your Buddhist journey that I, I feel like has a lot of brilliance uh, and that really betters the world and us as humans. There it all is. It means nothing, but there it is. And then to figure out, well, 
do I want to discard and just leave that there? Do I want to pick up some of these cards? Do I want to reorganize this deck? Do I want to leave them all on the table in this room or and just walk over them and go buy a new deck? Right. They're all potentialities. And when we can give ourselves permission to look at life and our circumstances and our desires from that place of objectivity and come back to responsibility for creation, I feel like that's probably where we probably would wield our, our sexuality in a very powerful way. Mm, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Um, you know, the, the, the theme that's kind of been coming together more clearly for me in, in my work, and I've actually been moving forward with this idea of, of moving from porn to purpose. And I spoke, yeah. I spoke earlier in, in our conversation today uh, about how, um, you know, I felt that porn was hindering me moving more into my purpose, uh, uh, impacting my sense of my sense of leadership, my worthiness as a leader and, and all the different stuff that comes up for us around maybe maintaining habits and behaviors that don't feel in integrity or in alignment with with who or what we're yeah. called to be, you know. And so I identified for myself that as I removed pornography from my life, I was able to um, one feel as though I was um, more more authentic in, 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 in my position, um, showing yeah. up more authentically, more, more vulnerably. Um, and I was, and I was moving, um, moving more toward, toward my purpose and more into my purpose without, um, so much interruption, you know, cause I always found that porn would kind of set me back and I have to kind of start yeah. back over and regain momentum again. Um, so in, in my work, I've also identified that in, in the work that we do in the making peace with porn community and the porn to purpose work with the guys is that a, a, a lot of times we, we maintain behaviors or, or habits that don't serve us and we continue to self-sabotage because we don't have a vision for uh, something else or we have it, but we don't believe it, you know? So, so, so much of the work that we do in our community is, is helping men to really tap in to that sense of purpose, tap into that vision for life that inspires them and energizes them and, and tap more into their calling. Because whenever we have that, it's like we have something to live for. And if yeah. we're going to say no to the porn, what are we saying yes to? You know, yep. and that's yep. such a big it, that's such a big piece, I, I think, of the journey. And it's, I think it's such a big piece of the long term abstinence journey, you know, really yeah. tapping in and continuing to clarify that purpose. So so what maybe do you have to offer around those ideas? You've spoken a lot to purpose already today. And and what might you offer to to a man that's that's um, maybe dealing with pornography in his own life and, and tapping more into his own sense of purpose or calling? And I think what you've spoke is, has a lot of wisdom in it. And if somebody would commit to being like, yeah, I'm going to go 30 days, no porn. Like just as an experiment, like you don't have to go like your entire life. Maybe you want to, maybe you don't, but at least give you 30 days to be like, no. And here's going to be the difficulty. It, Cause I, the root you're right is about connection. So what's going to happen is we have to connect to the truth of like, yeah, I'm feeling alone or I'm feeling connect disconnected or I have so much stress that I don't know where to channel it. Right. But then surrendering to that experience or just like breathing, like learning how to like surrender and be with the experience. And dude, I found a lot of people don't know how to be with their experience. Mm. They've never been trained. They've never been educated. Like if you're feeling a lot of anger, I was feeling some anger. Man, even today, I carry a lot of anger, but I give myself permission to find a way to express it, whether that's me driving down the road and just like, like breathing into it and just being like, Fah! like just giving it a sound and, and on the other side of just expressing it in a healthy way. I'm like, wow, I feel good. I feel connected. Yeah. Right. Or it's, for some people, it may bring up sadness. And they get to give themselves permission because maybe they've been brought up that men don't cry. And maybe they have to, to learn like you're a human being. <laughs> you feel, you're feeling some sadness. Give yourself permission to put a voice to it. Or if you could move your body in a way that would express it, what would that be like? How could you do it 10% more? Like just giving yourself permission to connect. And that's going to be something we train ourselves. And I don't think there's any other way to do it than admitting the truth of like, yo, I'm using this thing, whether it's porn, whether it's sugar, whether it's alcohol, whether it's meditation. I mean, it can be 
a plethora of things that's keeping us from connecting to the truth of our experience. And when we're willing to learn how to do that and surrender to the experience, that inspired action and those inspired thoughts and the inspired intuition does open up on the other side of it, only always. Mm. Like I, I've been on a fasting journey recently. I'll, I'll, I'll fast again this next week for probably four to five days. And dude, it's, it's amazing to me two days in how I, my body's not hungry at all, actually. But I'll just be walking down the hallway of our house and my, my mind goes, you should eat some chocolate chip cookies. I'm like, mm -hmm. where did that come from? Mm -hmm. But I'm not even hungry. Yeah, but they'd be really, really good. You're right. They would be really good. But uh, I'm feeling really connected right now. I don't really want the cookies. And it's just amazing as you go on this journey, but it is a decision like lying in the sand. This is what I've decided. This is what I'm committed to. How we like start really finding genuine connection, mm -hmm. inspired action that we will never, ever access through the noise of whether it's porn or whether it's sugar or whether it's television. And I, I think that's why it's fun to shake things up every now and then and go on these challenges, whether it's no porn for 30 days or no masturbation for 30 days or fasting for a week, or I don't know, just like give yourself permission to challenge where you start removing things um, that you use for connection. Yes. On the other side of those challenges, you'll, you'll learn more about yourself and you'll, yeah, and you'll experientially learn more about yourself. That's all I can mm -hmm. say. Because to say any more would even see the way that you have an ex, you know, somebody listening to this and be like, okay. And I'm already setting up expectations when really they're just going to have to go experience it for themselves. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> you know, I've been following uh, Kevin Nations for a long time. Um, I'm awesome. sure you're familiar. And, and, yes. and uh, many years ago, he, he made a post and it's always stuck with me. And I, and I refer it in, in, to it in my own writing with my own clients you know, regularly. And he, he said something to the effect of there has been more, uh, there has been more value in the things that I have removed from my life than in the things I've added to my life. You know what I mean? Oh, and good. Yeah. Sometimes those, those, those nuggets are just like, psh, and, you know, so significant, you know? Yeah. It's just, I've never heard that before, but now like just looking back on my life, I find that true to be very mm -hmm. true as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> similarly with, with with the fasting you know that's also part of my practice a day a week i do a like a just a liquid fast you know and yeah, me too. A, a, a big part of my process has been working to cultivate a healthier more conscious more mindful relationship with food because i've always just mindlessly eaten sometimes yeah. i'll i'll take a week off of not eating in front of the screen that's another place i mindlessly eat and overindulge mm. and those two go very very much hand in hand so the fasting for me is an opportunity for me to cultivate greater levels of that emotional awareness and yeah just a willingness to be with that and i find that um similar issues come up, uh, similar emotions come up for me around food and, and sex, you know, yes. like it, it, it's a very, it's a very similar, oh, it's a very similar emotional impulse that comes up. Maybe at one time in my life, I, I would reach for the porn another time in my life, I'd reach for the food, but very similar. And whenever you, as you say, engage in these challenges, these, these practices of absence, you can begin to see more clearly these impulses as they arise and, and not responding to them creates so much uh, insight, I think. Yeah, I had no idea until I fasted for four and a half days how much I was actually using food to feel satisfied. Yeah. Like I had no idea. And it wasn't about connection. It was about satisfaction. Mm. It was really fascinating. And I was mm. like, whoa, I haven't realized I've been using food to feel satisfied. It wasn't, a, it wasn't sugar. It wasn't cookies. It was just food in general, eating to an amount that I felt like Oh, satisfaction. Yeah. Really interesting. Really interesting. Yeah. It certain, certainly is, brother. Um, we've spoken to purpose today quite a bit. And, and I love that conversation. And we kind of we kind of kicked the conversation off today with uh, the, the, a lot of the work that you're doing with your clients around this idea of purpose and tapping into our soul calling and connecting more with that and living more through that. Um, what, what might you offer to, to someone who says, man, I know there's a, a calling in my life. I know there's more for me than working the nine to five or, or whatever. I know I've got these gifts, talents, skills, unique abilities, and I would love nothing more than just to, to give myself fully to them and also serve you know, through this, but maybe they're having a hard time clarifying with that, connecting to that, or even fathoming how that's a possibility for them. What might you offer? I, 
I would tell them to use a practice I've cultivated uh, called daily dialogue. It's a very simple practice, and it's one that's profoundly changed my life and the lives of my clients. It's a, it's a very simple practice, and this is interesting about like simple ancient truths. Simple to do, simple not to do. <laughs> <laughs> so the practice is every morning, pull out your journal, like a five by seven journal, use a pen, do not type, use a pen or a pencil. I, I use a pen so it doesn't like get washed away. Because when we write with the pen, what happens is we access more of our brain. Like scientists has proven when we're writing with a pen, the mechanics of writing is accessing the left side of our brain, our logic. And so it opens up our ability to connect to our right side of our brain more, our creativity. And so we start finding perspectives and we start accessing perspectives that were always there, but we just didn't have access to them before. So mm -hmm. three pages a day, just write in your journal, just stream of consciousness. Just take what you get. And there's a couple principles that are going to help. One is to connect to the truth of what you're experiencing for the day unapologetically. Now, lots of people won't do it because they're like, well, what if my wife reads it? Or what if so-and-so reads it? Oh, you know, it's your journal. It's your sacred space. Some people are like, oh, well, what if I allow that to come through me, that expression? What, won't God be mad at me? Right. <laughs> and it's like, look, God already knows all of you anyway. If I can't be like fully authentic in my expression and genuine in my expression with that, then how could I be genuine in my expression with myself or any other human? Right. Pretty sure God or whatever you want to call it, I'll call it God, has the capacity to be with me in my genuine expression. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if we can come to the page and give ourselves permission, and sometimes it's I, my genuine expression is gratitude. Like, man, I love this coffee. I look outside of my office. I'm like, look at these beautiful plants and the trees and the sky. And it's genuine appreciation. And there's other days where I'm just like, my wife hates me. What the fuck? Like, like just giving myself permission to, to get down into that primal part of me, bypass my conscious brain, get down into the primal and just let it out. And then start asking empowering questions. I learned this from Tony Robbins. He said something like, he said something like the quality of your questions determine your quality of life. I took that to mean if I ask empowering questions, I get empowering answers. If I ask disempowering questions, I'm going to get disempowering answers. Jesus said like, ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and the door shall be opened. So we better be careful what we're asking for and what doors we're knocking on. So if we can take these principles into daily dialogue and connect to the truth of our experience and then ask empowering questions like, you know, God or universe or science or whatever you want to connect with, like our highest self, like, what do you want? What do you want to experience through me? Like be like this. And then just take what you get, whatever just comes to mind. Don't make it meaning. Just write it down. Just give yourself permission just to take what you get three pages a day. Even if you're like, maybe this is your first time to do this. And you're like, yo, I listened to this podcast. This weird dude said, I'm, do, you know, write down, I'm going to try this because, Hey, what do I have to lose? And, and you're just, that's where you start. And maybe by like line two, you're like, this is stupid. That guy's crazy. Just write it down. I don't right. care. Yeah. Something happens about halfway down the page where you start accessing something that starts coming through you. And I only see this happen with every single human being who commits to this process. And if they'll, if they'll commit to the process, again, give me 14 days, give me 10 days. It always directs you to clarity. Maybe not to like, oh, this is my vision for my entire life. But hey, this is like my vision to like walk over to uh, that light pole right there. Uh -huh. And then once I get to there, it's like, hey, there's the place to walk to that trash can. There's a place to walk to there. Hey, there's a place to walk to the house. Like it will guide you only every single time to carving out your unique purpose on life. Uh -huh. That would be the tool in which I would give any human to use. And again, simple to do, simple not to do. And it, it very much is a practice, just like 
meditation, like, or lifting weights. It's a practice. Yeah. Beautiful, brother. Beautiful. Um, something else I've been working working on from in my own journey in terms of just really connecting with what's right for me, what's calling me, and and what's the next move for me is really like checking in more with my body. Does it feel like an energetic yes? Or do I feel constriction and resistance around it? And that to me is like our intuition and like, how do we key into the subtlety of that? And how do we trust in, in, in listening to that more, you know? Yeah. So my favorite thought experiment, and we'll do this together because I think it will serve people. I learned this from Jonathan Heston and we do this at our uprising event. So right now, as you're listening to the podcast and you can try this on too, Matt, and I'll try this on myself. I want you to imagine you just received a plate of food. I want you to uh, imagine it as like your favorite food. Like imagine it, see it. Imagine there's a fork. Imagine yourself sticking the fork in that food, putting it into your mouth. And now I want you to imagine that that food is, is dog shit. Mm. Like that feeling that you just experienced is kind of, is that, that constriction that, yeah yeah that that's your authentic genuine like no so now we'll do it again i want you to imagine there's a plate of food let's imagine your favorite food matt what's your favorite food buddy what's your most favorite food i'll say macaroni and cheese brother awesome so it's the most tastiest macaroni and cheese for those listening to this maybe it's a steak maybe it's lobster maybe it's tom kai soup i don't know what it is whatever it is for you just imagine it imagine seeing it imagine it being there, the smell of it. Now you get your fork or your spoon, you pick it up. Now put it on your mouth and imagine it being what it is for Matt here. It's macaroni and cheese for somebody else. It may be a steak or a lobster. Like that, that feeling is like a genuine yes. Mm. And so when we understand those two distinctions, we can learn to check into our body to really to see what really is lighting us up, what is really our genuine yes, and what really is our genuine no. Now, the difference in this is just because we know it, it's a huge distinction, but now we have to have the courage to say yes or no. We have to have the courage <laughs> to speak our truth and not withhold. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As you mentioned, the, the, the simplest, most profound truths are, are the easiest, but also the hardest. Yes, yes, it's so true. Right. Yeah, brother. Um, I feel really good about our conversation today, brother. Uh, I want to give you an opportunity just to kind of uh, to, to wrap up and, and, and share your stuff. Is there anything further before we do that, that, that you would like to share just to kind of uh, complete upon our conversation here today? I mean, the only thing that's come up to me this moment is just like, remember, you're not your thoughts. You're not your emotions. You're not your body. And you are your thoughts. You are your emotions. You're your body. Like my invitation is like, to come home to you being the soul in control and, and learn to discipline your mind, learn to discipline and nurture your feelings. It's a gift that will, will serve you for a lifetime. Um, it is a gift that will change uh, your ancestral lineage, both old and future. <laughs> it will change you, it will change it changed it did it it changes everything and that's my invitation for those listening today i know we've talked about a lot of things but that's my my invitation um and then as far as just wrapping up uh i wrote a book it's a bestseller it's called unstoppable beacon it's all about how to maintain your center in the chaos how to embody your potential unlock freedom in life and business it's on amazon you can go grab it or you can just go to unstoppablebeacon.com um and get the book it has like five-star reviews. Um, people are saying amazing things about it. And um, yeah, I, I know reading it will change you um, for the better. Beautiful, yeah. brother. Beautiful. And I, I think I saw you have some events coming up and stuff as well. Yeah, I have uh, our next event's going to be here in Dallas. We have Uprising 7. That's going to be July 15th through the 18th, I believe, or 15th through the 19th. I don't remember exactly. Um, yeah, people can just go to ajamix.com, click on events, and uh, you can see the events that are happening there. Okay, beautiful. Uh, AJ, I really appreciate having you on here today. It's always an inspiring conversation, energizing conversation. Thank you. Yeah, I, Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I'm honored that you share your time with me, with us today. And welcome, uh, yeah. yeah, with that, uh, 
Anthony John Amix. Appreciate you so much, brother. You too, homie. Have a wonderful day. All right, brother. Peace. Peace, homie.